Hi everyone, this is our second video in the adjusting process series and this video will be specifically dedicated to examples of adjusting entries. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, these are all going to be adjusting entries as of January 31st, which is the end of the accounting period for this particular company, whatever that might be. So the first one is journalizing depreciation expense. So whenever you journalize a depreciation expense, you have to remember the journal entry. It's always going to be a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation, whatever the asset it belongs to, whatever its companion account is. So whether it's building or equipment. So in this case, we're going to debit depreciation expense for 700 and credit accumulated depreciation. Now keep in mind, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. So it does appear on the balance sheet in the asset section alongside its companion account, whatever that means, if it's the building or the equipment, whatever it happens to be, and it effectively reduces your assets. Okay, the second one is prepaid rent has expired. Now remember, prepaid rent is an asset account. In this case, we are using it up. It's expiring. When you use up an asset, that's an expense. In this case, it's rent. So we are incurring rent expense. And expenses increase with debits. And prepaid rent is an asset. It's being used up, so it's decreasing. And assets decrease with credits. Okay, so we'll debit rent expense for 300 and credit prepaid rent for 300 The third one is interest expense has been accrued of $800. This means that we have incurred interest expense, but we have not yet paid it. Okay, so it's accrued, it's gotten larger because we haven't paid it yet. So in this case, interest expense is increasing, expenses increase with debits, and we have not paid it, hence it's accrued. Therefore, we have incurred a liability here interest payable. So we debit interest expense for 800 and credit our interest payable account for 800. Let's look at a few more. Employee salaries owed from Monday through Thursday of a five-day work week. Weekly payroll is $10,000. Now weekly payroll would be Monday through Friday is $10,000. We're only incurring Monday through Thursday and we haven't paid it yet. So we're only incurring four days since Thursday ends on January 31st, the end of the period. So we have to record an adjusting entry showing the incurring of four days worth of salaries. Well, if five days is $10,000 and 10,000 divided by five is 2,000 per day, and we're incurring four days, so 2,000 times four is $8,000. So we're incurring $8,000 in salaries expense we haven't yet paid it, so we would credit salaries payable for that $8,000. The last adjusting entry in this example, unearned service revenue earned of $500. Now, this is kind of the second step of a process. So let's think about what happened originally for us to be able to earn $500 of unearned revenue. So originally we received $500 in cash for something we had not done yet, which created a liability to us called unearned service revenue, which would have been a credit. So we, we got $500 in cash, so we debited cash, and we credited the liability account unearned service revenue. Now we are earning that $500, so we no longer owe it, so we would have to take it out of the liability account. So we're reducing our liabilities. So to do that, we would debit the unearned service revenue account and we are earning it and revenues go up with credits. So we credit service revenue. The last part of this question, what would the overall effect of the omission of the above transactions be on net income? Well, net income is computed as revenues minus expenses. So we have one revenue here of $500. So if we didn't record that revenue, that would be a reduction to net income. And we have four expenses. We have the salaries expense here. We had depreciation expense. We had interest expense. And we had rent expense. 
and those all added up to $9,800. So if we did not record these adjusting entries, net income would be overstated by $9,300. So let me give you an example. Let's say that net income with the adjustment, if we had made the adjustments, was $10,000. Well, then let's say let's did, we didn't make the adjustments. So that would be $10,000 minus the revenues because revenues make net income go up. Well, if we didn't record it, that would reduce net income. And if we didn't record the expenses, that would increase net income. So net income would have been $19,300 if we had not made these adjustments. And $19,000 minus the $10,000 true net income gives us that $9,300 overstatement of net income. Okay, let's look at a few more examples here. So we're going to journalize the adjusting entries that are needed at December 31st for each of the following independent situations. So on October 31st, we collected $4,000 rent in advance. We debited cash and we credited unearned rent revenue. So this would be the original entry on October 31st. The question doesn't ask for this, but sometimes it helps us to see what happened first. The tenant was paying one year's rent in advance. Well, at December 31st, we must account for the amount of rent we've earned. Well, that $4,000 covers a full year, 12 months rent in advance that the tenant paid us as the landlord. Well, at December 31st, we have now earned October, November, and December's rent. So three out of 12 months we have earned. So 4,000 times three divided by 12 equals $1,000 that we have now earned. And we have to journalize that on December 31st. So we no longer owe our tenant that three months of rent. So we're gonna take that $1,000 out of unearned rent revenue and we have now earned it. So we will credit rent revenue for that $1,000. Let's take another look at a salary expense question. So here salary's expense is $1,500 per day, Monday through Friday, and the business pays employees each Friday. This year, December 31st, falls on a Thursday. So we have to journalize the fact that we have incurred salary expense for four days, Monday through Thursday, and the, the employees have not been paid yet because we're on a Thursday, December 31st, and they're not going to get paid until tomorrow. So on December 31st, we've got to record the salary's expense and the fact that we owe our employees for this four days of the work week. So $1,500 per day times four is $6,000. And we will debit salary's expense for $6,000 and credit salary payable for $6,000 because we now owe our employees this $6,000 at this point. The unadjusted balance of the supplies account is $3,100. Supplies on hand total $1,200. So sometimes the easiest way to think about this, these things is to draw a T account. So I'm going to draw a T account for you, supplies, and label everything. So supplies is an asset account, carries a debit balance. So our beginning balance was $3,100. That was the unadjusted balance. That's just another way to say beginning balance. Supplies on hand, meaning at the end of the period, so the ending balance was $1,200. So how did we get from $3,100 in supplies to $1,200 in supplies? Well, we must have used up some. And remember, the using up of an asset is an expense. And the difference in $3,100 and $1,200 is $1,900. And we want to journalize this. So supplies is an asset, they're being reduced, which is a credit, so you can see that in the T account. So we're gonna be crediting supplies, but what do we debit? Well, remember the using up of an asset is an expense, and this particular asset is called supplies. So the expense would be 
supplies expense. Equipment was purchased last year at a cost of $10,000. The equipment's useful life is four years. We need to record the year's depreciation. So we are specifically going to be talking about straight line depreciation. So that is spreading the cost of an asset over its useful life equally. Okay, so $10,000 over four years is $2,500 per year. And remember, we're recording depreciation. The entry is always the same. You debit depreciation expense, you credit accumulated depreciation. So on December 31st, we're going to record one year's depreciation, $2,500. And you'll notice I actually added the equipment word to accumulated depreciation, kind of separating it out there so that when we go to the balance sheet, we'll know exactly where to put this accumulated depreciation balance underneath the equipment account. On September 1st, when we prepaid $1,200 for a two-year insurance policy, we debited prepaid insurance and credited cash. So let's go ahead and journalize what we did on September the 1st. It's not what the question's asking for. It's just what happened on September the 1st. Remember, the question's asking for the adjusting entry happening on December 31st. So at this point, we have now... Um, used up September, October, November, and December's prepaid insurance. So four months. But we have to pay close attention to the description of this entry. This was for a two-year insurance policy. So that $1,200 is not over 12 months. It's over 24 months. So it's only $50 per month that we would use up in prepaid insurance. So four times 50 is $200. So to record the adjusting entry, the incurring of the insurance expense and the using up the, of the prepaid insurance, we would debit insurance expense for 200 and we would credit prepaid insurance. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope that it was helpful in some way. Again, if you did enjoy the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you will get updates when I upload new videos. Also, visit me online at theaccountingdoctor.com. I have a blog there and other great accounting things that you might find beneficial.